guys, welcome back to Enchanted Bayou. My name is Cassandra, and today we are going to continue on with our Spirits of the 27 Club and talk to someone who is really special. Of course, all of them are special, of course, so I don't want to just say that out there, but the reason this makes this more special is because a lot of you guys have been requesting it. And if there's something I can do or someone I can talk to that you guys are interested in hearing from, then I definitely want to be able to get that out there for you guys. So, the person that we're going to talk to is part of the 27 Club. Like I said, a lot of you have been requesting it. But he passed away back in the 90s. And before we get into that, make sure, since we're going back in the 90s, you guys grab your flannels, you grab your lip gloss. Um, you can even put your hair up in those crazy little bows. But then go down in the comments and tell me what your favorite part of the 90s was. Um, maybe your favorite trend, things like that. Um, I'm kind of ashamed to admit it, but my favorite part were the... Uh, the big baggy silver tab jeans. So, um, not the crazy ones, not the crazy ones. I had a lot of friends who wore those, and uh, yeah, but you know, the jeans that were like four, five, six, seven sizes too big for you. Yeah. So, anyway, and of course, you gotta love the flannels, you know. So, now that you left your comments, I'm going to tell you who we're gonna talk to today. We are going to try and reach out to Kurt Cobain. Um, now, if you don't wanna hear the whole conspiracy theories and all the stuff that goes along with it, I will leave a timestamp in the video of when all the spirit box stuff starts so that you can just skip over the spirit box stuff. But I want to get in the conspiracy theories and everything that kind of goes around it and tell you why Kurt was in the 27 Club or why we consider him to be part of the 27 Club besides the fact that he just passed away at the age of 27. Because uh, there's a lot of mystery around his death. A lot of theories are out there and some get a little crazy and a little kooky but we're going to kind of brief through those too. Now before we get into all the stuff surrounding Kurt Cobain, I want to let you guys know that I have been promising that I would set something up where I could do individual readings for you guys. So I have that set up. I'm excited to tell you I'm going to have that all set up through Patreon. I'm going to start doing live streams over there. I also am going to set up over on Patreon where twice a month we do a special video where you guys can send me some questions, things like that, of who you want to ask what about and we can try and contact them for you. Also, I'll be getting back to doing individual sessions, and if you want those posted on the channel, then that's great. If you don't want them posted on the channel, I completely understand. I'm happy to just send you a link. But yeah, go check out the Patreon. You can help support the channel for only $2 a month, because I want to keep making all these cool videos for you guys and talking to all these neat people, helping you reach out to your family, and go from there. So Kurt Cobain was actually born in Aberdeen, Washington in 1967. In 1987, he started the band Nirvana with a couple of his friends, and they did amazing. It was responsible for the whole grunge revolution, I guess you could say, in the 1990s, and yeah, he was like the Elvis for the Gen Xers. I mean, he was big. If you don't know much about Kurt Cobain, I'll just leave it at that, and you can look into more about him and information about him. But this video, we're gonna focus kinda of on the conspiracy theories about Kurt Cobain. So I won't get into too much of his music and everything else. Now, in 92, he met Courtney Love, and Courtney Love was also a grunge singer. I mean, she is very grunge. They got married in 92, and also in 92, they had a daughter named Frances Bean, who is still alive and doing very well today. He really adored her. Kurt just loved his daughter to pieces. You can see, you, I mean, that's evident in all the videos, everything that's online about him. Anytime that he's with her, he just looked like an amazing father and really, really cared about her. So things seem to be going good with that part of his life. However, a lot of people said that Courtney Love actually got Kurt Cobain into a lot of the drugs. And there are videos out there online showing them really high and really messed up together. And... That didn't last very long. Kurt wasn't really happy with that life. He, They actually went to rehab, and he did sneak out of the rehab and went back to Seattle. But he was wanting to get cleaned up. He wanted to get himself put together because he had this daughter that he was a wonderful father to, that he really loved. And so he was really working on getting things put together. Part of that getting put together, too, was also getting away from Courtney and the drugs and everything also. And there were talks about that... Kurt was planning on divorcing Courtney. Now, Courtney did have her own band, and she did okay, 
but not to the extent that Kurt was at. I mean, last I saw on his estate, it's worth $450 million. So he has a huge estate. He was doing very well. And we'll get into a little bit more of that on the conspiracy theory surrounding Courtney and Kurt's death. But let's get into some of the other parts of the conspiracy theory because we're talking about the 27 Club and we'll go from there. Now with all that money, Kurt had actually bought a very beautiful house, modest but very beautiful, in Seattle. And on April 8th in 1994, he was actually found dead in a little like apartment, mother-in-law apartment I guess you could call it, over the garage of that house. So there's a lot of theories about what happened, but let me tell you what the facts were. When they found Kurt, they found that he had three times the lethal dose of heroin in his body. Now, he was trying to get clean. He was working on himself for his daughter. So would he have been doing heroin? His friends say that he was, was clean. I, I know that a lot of people who have been former drug users have said that it's really hard and of course there's always problems with relapse and that is possible. Okay, but three times the lethal dose? Heroin, from what I understand, just is kind of like an instant. And so that that's pretty scary. He, he should have been dead pretty much instantly. However, what happened is that his official death was from a shotgun to the head. There's a great movie out on Netflix and it's called Soaked in Bleach and it talks about how it would have almost been impossible for him with everything that all the evidence that they found and all that to have actually killed himself with a shotgun. I mean, it's pretty difficult to do that with a shotgun. A couple other things about his death that are really weird and don't make a lot of sense is that neither the gun nor the gun cartridge, they don't have his fingerprints on them. Now they also found a suicide note next to him too. And the pen and the paper, it doesn't have his fingerprints on it either. So. Here's another twist to that though. The suicide note, and I'll put it up here so you guys can see it. It looks like part of it was written by him, but the uh, the like the first line and then the last few lines, they're completely different. They're not as methodically written out as you're gonna be able to see in this note. The investigators believe that the middle part of the note he actually wrote, but that the first line and the last line and the last few lines he didn't write and they talk about Courtney so that's a little bizarre and a little strange too. So what are a couple of the main conspiracy theories surrounding Kurt's death? I told you some of the weird things about his death as far as the shotgun, um, no fingerprints, not even his fingerprints on the gun, the gun cartridge, the note, the pen, the whole thing just seemed really strange. He was starting to get his life together and he just adored his daughter. So some of the, here we go, some of them are a little far out, but bear with me here. The CIA conspiracy, okay? This is just one that I was finding and, and researching online. The conspiracy that the CIA killed him. He had a ton of influence over the youth of America at that time and actually I would say the youth of the world in many instances and and they wanted him to push the drug agenda you know so to keep everyone's everyone's minds from being able to think and see what's really going on in the world so they really wanted him to be on drugs and to be out there promoting drugs and keeping kids on drugs so that they could continue on with their evil plans, I guess? So that's a CIA, con CIA conspiracy, okay? Next conspiracy, you know it's gotta be the Illuminati, because the Illuminati does everything. We can't have a conspiracy without talking about the Illuminati, so here's how we'll go with the Illuminati. Now, Kurt was actually in a recovery center, um, you know, a rehab center in Los Angeles, and it was called the Exodus Recovery Center. But there was a former orderly and his name was Fred Kelso, okay? And Fred Kelso said that Kurt said that they, quote, they were using his music all wrong and, quote, that there were forces in the world that control everything and no one knows it. So if Kurt was maybe busted talking about, while he was in rehab talking about, these forces in the world that control everything, did they come after him, did they kill him? That's like the Illuminati conspiracy out there. Now the big conspiracy, which makes a lot more sense, is that he was getting his life together, he was happy, he was ultra famous, and he was getting ready to divorce his wife. With divorcing his wife, 
he had the money, I would assume, to take his daughter, uh, especially since he was clean and sober and she wasn't, and also take that lifestyle away from Courtney. I mean, yes, she was a musician, and yes, she had her own band, but she did not have anywhere near the amount of money that Kurt had. Just to give you a little idea of how much money was in his state, his daughter, Frances Bean, I was researching and looking into it, is still receiving $100,000 a month, I guess, income, salary, from Kurt Cobain's estate. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we're talking a lot of money here, okay? When she found out that her husband was missing from the rehab, she was just too busy to go look for him or do anything or help him or help them find him. She just had other stuff that she was going to do. So that's a little strange. Also, the note is a little strange. And the suicide note, here's where one of the parts comes in really interesting. On the suicide note, it looks like it's a loving letter at the end for Courtney. Everyone knew that he was going to leave her. So even her... Her stepfather said that he believes that Kurt was murdered, and you know she doesn't know that it, he doesn't know that it was Courtney or not. But um, one other thing that makes it really seem like Courtney is not long before Kurt's death, Courtney had spoken to a man who was in a smaller Seattle band, and his name was Eldon Hoke, and he was in a smaller Seattle band, and Courtney had offered him, get this, fifty thousand dollars to kill Kurt Cobain. Now. Eldon didn't think that she was for real. He said that he would pass it on to a friend, that he would not do that. But he didn't believe she was. this was a real thing. I mean, I, I, I don't think you joke about something like that, but whatever. Why is she offering people money to kill her husband? Just seems a little weird and a little strange. So there are a lot of other little details that make it seem that Kurt Cobain's death was not a suicide. And if you're interested in more of that, you can find tons on Google or you can go watch that show on Netflix called Soaked in Bleach. That has a lot of the detectives talking about reasons why they feel that it wasn't a suicide. So it's a pretty amazing show. But on my show, what we like to do is we like to go to the spirit box and see if we can contact Kurt Cobain. Now, if you're new here, welcome. Let me tell you how things go around here. I do not edit my spirit box sessions, so they are loud and they are noisy, and I apologize for that. I also don't edit my spirit box sessions at all or cut them. Um, I don't even cut blank spots because I want to show you guys that it is 100% real, so my spirit box sessions are 100% raw. Now I do two different spirit box sessions. I do the first one on what you'll see here is the typical PSB7 spirit box, okay? And this is the one that you'll see on most ghost shows. And then the second spirit box session that I do is with an app. But the one that I use for iOS is called SBX12 Spirit Box Lite. I use the Lite version. I'm not associated with either of these companies. I just really like using this app and the spirit box. It's kind of two ways to give you more confirmation. And I'm actually thinking about throwing some other ways in the mix here and I'll tell you guys about that going forward. So. We'll talk about that later, but right now let's get to the spirit box and see if we can talk to Kurt Cobain, see if he can come visit us, okay? I will be right back. Get ready for the noise because it gets very loud. Okay, before we get in the spirit box session, there's one other thing that I forgot to mention. Um, all of my spirit box sessions are actually reviewed by a military expert, and he was in the military for 10 years, and his job was to translate radio communication. Uh, radio communications to basically keep all of us safe in the United States. You will see all of his translations and mine throughout the video. If there's something that I missed or something you heard, please let me know in the comments below and let's get started. Okay. Okay, guys. We are here and Ethan, are you there? Ethan, Ethan and E, are you there? We have someone that I think you guys are going to be excited about that we want to talk to today. Can you find us Kurt Cobain? Can we talk to Kurt Cobain? Can you help us talk to Kurt Cobain? Yeah, I don't... 
me see what's going on. This is not very loud. Kurt, when you're there, can you tell me what town were you born in? Oh my gosh, that said Aberdeen. This still shocks me sometimes, guys. Kurt, how old were you when you passed away? Kurt, are you there? Can you tell me how old you were when when you passed away? What was the name of your band? Can you tell us how you're doing? You have so many fans across the world who are so worried and concerned about you. How are you doing? Did someone kill you or did you kill yourself? If you killed yourself, say suicide. If someone killed you, can you can you tell us who killed you? Tell them if you could give them one last message. What would you say? Do you have any messages for your daughter? like on the other side? Can you tell us any information about that, about where you are and how you're doing? And can you come through really strong and tell us how you died? Okay, I'm going to switch spirit boxes now, okay? Okay, so this is the app that I'm going to use, and it's called SBX 12 Spirit Box Lite, and this one does get noisy, so prepare for the noise. Hi, Ethan. I just heard you say your name. Can you help Kurt Cobain come through really clearly and talk to us on this app? were you born in? K, 
Can you tell me what your daughter's name is? Her first name? Kurt, everyone wants to know, how did you die? Kurt, did someone kill you? What messages do you have for your fans out there? Is there some piece of evidence that could prove what happened to you? Prove how you died? Do you have anything else to say that you would like to say, Kurt? Okay, I'm going to let you go. Thank you for coming and talking with us. Goodbye. Okay, guys. Well, as always, I will go through everything. I will have my specialist go through everything. Anything that we hear, we will leave throughout the video. Anything that you hear, please leave in the comments below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel and please share this around. We are right around 2,000 subscribers and we want to keep growing. So, love you all. Share this with your family and we'll grow together.